Christ's birth and kingdom are foretold by Isaiah. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shined. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be called upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Thanks be to God.
beloved in Christ, as we prepare for the great festival of Christmas, let it be our care and delight to hear again the message of the angels and in heart and mind to go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which is come to pass and the babe lying in a manger. Therefore, let us read and mark in Holy Scripture the tale of the loving purposes of God from the first days of our disobedience unto the glorious redemption brought us by this holy child. But first, let us pray for the needs of the whole world, for peace on earth and goodwill among all his people, for unity and brotherhood within the church he came to build, and especially in this university and city of Oxford. And because this of all things would rejoice his heart, let us remember in his name the poor and helpless, the cold, the hungry and the oppressed, the sick and them that mourn, the lonely and the unloved, the aged and the little children, all those who know not the Lord Jesus or love him not or who by sin have grieved his heart of love. Lastly, let us remember before God all those who rejoice with us but upon another shore and in a greater light. That multitude which no one can number, whose hope was in the word made flesh, and with whom in the Lord Jesus we are forever one. These prayers and praises let us humbly offer up to the throne of heaven in the words which Christ himself hath taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen.
prophet Micah foretells the glory of Bethlehem. But thou, Bethlehem Ephrata, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me, that is to be the ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from of old, from everlasting. Therefore will he give them up until the time that she which travaileth has brought forth. Then the remnant of his brethren shall return unto the children of Israel. And he shall stand and feed in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall abide, for now shall he be great unto the ends of the earth. Thanks be to God. Gabriel salutes the Blessed Virgin Mary. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin 
espoused to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her, and said, Hail, thou that art highly favoured, the Lord is with thee, blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favour with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father, David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore, also, that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For with God nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. Thanks be to God.
Saint Luke tells of the birth of Jesus. And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This census first took place while Quirinius was governing Syria. So all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and the lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. So it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered, and she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling cloths, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Thanks be to God.
the shepherds go to the manger. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for, behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste, and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Thanks be to God.
St. John unfolds the great mystery of the Incarnation. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory is of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Thanks be to God. <coughs> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Radical and transformative are words that are not often heard around the quads of Merton. And yet, in just a few days' time, the College is set to experience a completely unprecedented event, which is both radical and innovative. Looking back over Merton's history, there are a number of possible comparators to either one of these. In 1380, the admission of the first undergraduates. During the Civil War, the decision to buck the Royalists' collegiate trend by siding with the parliamentarians. And more recently, the establishment of Oxford's first collegiate girls' choir. But all of these pale into insignificance when compared with what's about to unfold. Brace yourselves, as I tell you that for the first time in the College's 758-year history, the Fellows' Christmas dinner will be followed by a discotheque. <laughs> a Fellows' Christmas bop. Now, at this point, wearing my welfare hat, I need to say to you who are taught by fellows of the college or work alongside us, please, please, please don't be tempted to imagine the scene. <laughs> it's not worth the mental scarring or nightmares. Rather, let's consider the playlist. The organisers have asked for requests, which has produced the following. The finance bursar and development director want to dance together to the ABBA classic, Money, Money, Money. <laughs> English tutor Professor McCabe is polishing his dance shoes in readiness for Miss Macbeth by Elvis Costello. Physics tutor Professor Shekhar Sheehan has requested Jarvis Cocker's quantum theory although it's rumoured that he's also being urged to consider Simon and Garfunkel's The Sound of Silence. <laughs> A 
And last of all, for our very dear neuroscientist warden and soon to be Vice Chancellor, the Queen of Pain herself. It's a toss up between REM's Everybody Hurts <laughs> and Culture Club's Do You Really Want to Hurt Me? <laughs> a song that may not be far from her lips over the next seven years. The word was made flesh and dwelt among us. In the Christmas story that we've heard again this evening, there are no accounts of dancing. And yet from as early as the third century, Christians have described the way in which the three persons of the Trinity relate to each other as a dance. Theologians call this perichoresis, a dance in which the Father, Son and Spirit retain their distinct identity while dancing together in perfect harmony, in a constant, unceasing, interweaving movement animated by the same intent to express love and joy and delight in each other as they serve each other. But what does perichoresis have to do with us? Well, the radical truth of Christmas is that when the word becomes flesh, this divine dance becomes the world's dance. When God becomes human, an invitation to the divine bop is offered to all. Two questions arise from this. First, where is this dance? And second, who will we be dancing with? The birth of Christ provides a challenging answer to both of these. First, because of the birth of the Christ child, Son of God and Son of Mary, God is with us. As a result of the incarnation, there is no person, no place anywhere in the universe that falls outside of God's loving, redeeming embrace. In Christ and through the Holy Spirit, God is here. Not gazing down on us at a distance with pitying sympathy from his holy heaven. We do not need to travel anywhere to take our place on this dance floor. It is here, here in our very midst, in every aspect of our lives, because in Christ, God is with us. As to who our dance partners are, well, the whole of creation is invited. There's no point in working out the capacity of the venue or attempting a risk assessment. This dance is for all, and no one is excluded. Why? Because God is love, and God's loving purpose is to share his life with all people. That's why the word becomes flesh. That's what we celebrate at Christmas. As Jesus says in John's Gospel, I have come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. And yet we who are God's beloved, who are called by name to take God and each other by the hand and wonder at this miracle of life-giving inclusion, we struggle again and again to believe that God can possibly have meant it this way. Our preference, our default mode, is so often not to include, but to discriminate, marginalise, overlook or ignore. In here I don't just mean the way in which we treat others, but also sometimes ourselves. At Christmas, God challenges our wanting to write our own guest list with a message of all-inclusive, all-embracing love by becoming one of us, one of all of us, the perfect embodiment of love thereby making sacred and of infinite value and worth the flesh of every person and inviting every person to dance with the three-person God 
and each other. This is no solo dance routine or pas de deux. It's for all, and it's forever. But it's also a risk. For if we accept this invitation to dance with God and the whole of creation, this unceasing outpouring of love and joy and delight given and received will change us. God's passionate desire for us to become the people he created us to be will, through God's grace, transform us as the intense loving regard with which God looks us in the eye becomes more and more the way in which we view the world and its people. So then, radical and transformative. Both of these words can be used to describe the incarnation. C.S. Lewis knew this when he said that God is not a static thing, but a dynamic, pulsating activity, a life, almost a kind of drama, a kind of dance. <coughs> and if that's the case, well then perhaps a fellow's Christmas bop isn't such a bad idea after all. The word was made flesh and dwelt among us.
peace, let us pray. Almighty God, you make us glad with the yearly remembrance of the birth of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that as we joyfully receive him as our Redeemer, we may with sure confidence behold him when he shall come to be our judge, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the perseverance of the wise men, the obedience of Mary and Joseph, and the peace of the Christ child be God's gift to you this Christmas. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the light and peace of Christ.